We're here today with Ayla Bakali, the U.S. representative of the Crimean Tatar Majlis. Thank you so much for your time. Can you tell us some background about the history of the Crimean Tatars and their relationship to Ukraine? The relationship between Ukraine and Crimean Tatars have not been of animosity or of friction because Ukraine itself was also colonized by Russia. And since the independence, the first Orange Revolution followed by Maidan, uh, uh, events at Maidan Square, which I might add that it's a Crimean Tatar word, Maidan. Um, since then, it has been always uh, the efforts of Ukraine to be independent as well, to claim their own Ukrainian culture, to reclaim their own re uh, Ukrainian language. This has never been allowed. The irony is that the Crimean Tatars and Ukrainians have shared the same platform against this one colonizer. Ukraine had Holodomor, which is 1932-33 artificial famine. We had the May 18, 1944 deportation. Here we have one nation, two genocides, and the world is sleeping. It's important that the world understand that Ukraine did not deport the Crimean Tatars on May 18, 1944. The indigenous Crimean Tatars value that historical fact. And the fact that Stalin, under Soviet Russia, deported en masse an entire people which is the Crimean Tatars from Crimea, in order to russify Crimea as one of their warm ports and eventually make it a, a springboard to enter into the Mediterranean and to the warm ports. The ethos of Ukrainians are not imperialistic, have never been. There is no historical uh, precedents of Ukraine in which they um, uh, had an imperialistic uh, a policy or initiative in their whole entire history. But Russia had, had a pure imperialistic policy to this day. It's very important. So I think the focus should be on the colonizer, should not, uh, should not be on two peoples the Ukrainians and the indigenous Crimean Tatars who are victims of Russian communism and Russian federalism. What is the status of the rights of indigenous people in Russia? There are no political representation of the Crimean Tatars in, uh, in Crimea right now. And there is not intended to be one. They will not be one uh, because the uh, Russian rule at this time are, are um, in a sort of a quiet way, in a very subtle way, um, are, are uh, placing the Crimean Tatar indigenous voice on the background. That they are russifying Crimea and they're trying to russify Crimean Tatars. And there will not be success. Having said that, having said that, the Crimean Tatars mentioned if they don't, if the Crimean Tatar people don't have a voice, if they cannot uh, process their indigenous uh, krultai, their self-assembly, they don't have a right of self-assembly, they don't have a right to gather, uh, they did not give them the permit to commemorate the May 18, 1944 deportation. They did not allow the Crimean Tatars to commemorate the Flag Day, the Crimean Tatar Flag Day. In other words, it's going to be as what Tsar Katrina, Tsarina Katrina's initiative policy was in the uh, 18th century, which is to establish a Crimea without Crimean Tatars. Indigenous people have a right to self-determine who, how they should rule. 
and with the indigenous Crimean Tatars, they vie for self-determination within the territorial integrity of Ukraine. And so therefore, our voice is very important for Ukraine and for every indigenous people. It's a self-identification. Can you tell us about the Mejlis and the other political institutions of the Crimean Tatars? The World Congress of Crimean Tatars are going to be at the forefront uh, as a non-governmental Ukrainian body to really voice to the world the human rights violations, the persecutions, the killings, and the unjust uh, imprisonment of Crimean Tatars and Ukrainians that are occurring in Crimea today. Because after all, Crimea is Ukraine. So there are a lot of Ukrainian voices, patriotic Ukrainian voices, who also are not allowed to speak. This is very important to understand. So how can you have a democratic functioning representation when you are annexed, when you have a colonizer? It's not possible. Venice Commission doesn't recognize it. It's not possible. Is it likely that Crimea will be reintegrated into Ukraine in the future? It absolutely. It must. It cannot be any otherwise. In 1991, uh, when Ukraine was vying for its independence after the fall of Soviet Union. It is the indigenous Crimean Tatar vote in Crimea that gained the uh, 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 independence away from Russia and linked it to, to be part of Ukraine. And this tells you what a valuable role that indigenous peoples can play and especially the Crimean Tatars who have played that, we are undervalued, underrepresented, and so it's very important that this relationship is heard. Look at the irony of the referendum. It was voted by Russian ethnics who were artificially placed in Russia after the en masse deportation of the Crimean Tatars. There is no indigenous voice. There is no prior informed consent uh, of the Crimean Tatars on this referendum. As a matter of fact, we did not participate at the referendum. The Venice Commission states you cannot have a referendum while there is militarization. And that is the aim of Russia, is to militarize Crimea. If Crimea remains under Russian occupation, what would the goal of the Crimean Tatars be politically if the status quo remains? The indigenous Crimean Tatars do not want to settle. And the distinction should be made between surviving and not settling. They have to survive. And it's a very small group under a very brutal, strong occupier. And so Crimean Tatars have survived under Stalin. Look at the historical precedents. Stalin's probably rolling in his grave with, uh, on, uh, uh, given the fact that 300,000 Crimean Tatars have returned. It did, he was not successful. If Crimean Tatars can survive the Siberian gulags, if the Crimean Tatars can survive the deportation and the, uh, the brutal, brutal uh, genocide on the cattle train wagons that occurred uh, on the time of deportation, they can survive this. Now, it will be new modus operandi of survival mechanism. And, and given the uh, social media networks today, we are aware of what's going on. We are aware of what's going on. The world is aware of what's going on. And, and, and there's a precedence of what happened in Georgia and with Ossetia as well. And the world is very conscious that Crimea will not be a frozen conflict. But there's a, a geostrategic factor here. 
<clears throat> Historically, if we go back to the Crimean War of 1854 uh, and 56, here there was a, a global of effort, uh, if you will, uh, with Britain and France and the Ottoman Empire to push back the uh, Tsar Russia from occupying Crimea because these leaders, men, understood the strategic importance of Crimea and its access to the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus. This should be an alarm, not only for Turkey, which it is, but also for European nations as well, that for Russia, annexing Crimea also, also puts their security at risk. This is very, very important for the international politics, for the international community to uh, have this discourse that what does this mean strategically, geostrategically, for Russia to be in Crimea. So it's not only that the indigenous Crimean Tatars at risk, it's the European cultures are at risk as well. Can you describe the treatment and reception of displaced Crimean Tatars in the rest of Ukraine? Ukraine uh, government has, has taken on a broader scope of policy and legislation to incorporate all its ethnic citizenry into a full function Ukrainian citizens. And uh, that as in US there's Italian Americans and there's institutions that support Italian language and Italian culture. And similarly Ukraine is also uh, doing the same. It is addressing that issue. It's not something that it's going to address. It is something that it has recognized the multi-ethnicity and that these multi-ethnic groups will be Ukrainian citizens and based on that uh, move forward. At the same time there are other Ukrainians who have been building up support for the displaced from Donetsk and Luhansk. So here you have internally displaced from Crimea uh, to Liev and Kherson region. You have internally displaced from uh, Donetsk and Luhansk. And, and it is uh, definitely uh, uh, providing uh, support for Crimean Tatars as well. But I think the international community should support Ukraine more in its internally displaced population. It's very, very important uh, because here at one end it's trying to uh, 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 streamline its democratizations within its institutions while there is an aggression going on and while its borders are being compromised. And then while there is internal uh, 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 displacement, um, but the Ukrainian people are good people and so there is a, a support for the Ukrainians and the Ukrainian uh, American, uh, the Ukrainian Con Congress Committee of America has done a lot uh, to support clothes and donations and other, uh, other matters as well. So um, the fact that there is initiative and the, the fact that there is no blockage of that initiative is good, but now there has to be international support to Ukraine in order for Ukraine to help its people as well. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us today. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me, and thank you for giving a platform for indigenous Ukrainians, the Crimean Tatars of Crimea, Ukraine. Thank you.